Hello, uh, this is the class recording from yesterday. Uh, the topic for this discussion is control theory. Uh, what is what what it is to uh, scrutinize and why? And this is our first learning module uh, in the class. And uh, uh, the purpose for this is to uh, give a uh, uh, critique of the so-called control theory and uh, question this basic premise, its conceptualization, and so on. Okay. And uh, we have a writing assignment that uh, uh, was due last week. We collected, and in class we discuss various will uh, various uh, will point points. Okay. So this is uh, uh, a recording of the class discussion, and. Uh, for protection of student privacy, I took the student uh, speech out and mainly uh, gave uh, my response and discussion. And there are six pieces here. One uh, start, the uh, first one starts with the distinction between disturbance and noise. Uh, the second one is the, the problem of uh, theory practice divergence and my struggle uh, to understand it. And the third one, we uh, went back to the origin of cybernetics, uh, the failures uh, in the past to understand and to conceptualize, uh, and the need for us to do some reflection, re-examination, re and maybe leading to a renewal. The fourth uh, piece um, is all in the same video, but uh, in, in you know, the six parts. Part number four, is a, a student a question? Is this the uh, is, is this a questioning the endless process, or is there a stop to it? Yeah. And my response. Yeah. And uh, uh, part five is uh, uh, this con control theory fun. Is there something wrong with it? And uh, uh, my take on it. Yeah. So I only suggest my point of view is not dominant point of view. It's a personal point of view and students are free to explore their own point of view. That's the whole point behind this uh, writing assignment. Uh, half of class didn't quite get it right because they were never asked for their own opinion on something uh, like this. Uh, so, but, but the other half did excellent job. So our in-class discussion is mostly uh, discussing um, those uh, uh, writings. Uh, and this is the back end of that discussion. The first part of uh, this discussion happened last week before I learned how to do recording like this. Uh, so um, uh, this is only uh, a part of that. Uh, and at the end, I uh, told uh, a story about uh, my professor, uh, Charles Worth, uh, and that wound up today's uh, recording. Uh, thank you, Hopeful, uh, hopefully you enjoy this and uh, put comments uh, down below and uh, we'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we should uh, uh, maybe uh, um, think about the, real the reliability of a language because we are using layman language to try to uh, make a clear uh, distinction in engineering terms. So that loose ball joint, that changes vehicle dynamics, right? That, that, that's that's not a, that that's not even not, that's not even a random. It's a particular defect to your car, and you can characterize it mathematically. And and that's not a a, a, a random variable. You have a, a certain probability distributions. <laughs> uh, so, so let's make a, a, a demarc and by the way, this is the same uh, issue faced by Kalman. If you read common paper from 1960, he had a term for this. He recognized that the, the sensor noises associated with the measurement because he was talking about the uh, satellite. He was talking about satellite dynamics, satellite movement, and he, he, uh, he uh, 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 the primary, primary problem he had to face is filtering problem. How do you obtain the, uh, 
uh, noisy measurement of the uh, orbit data. You know, the satellite is moving, right? You, you have this radar to measure the movement, position, velocity, and so on. How do you obtain uh, those uh, uh, signals, get rid of noise, and accurately uh, uh, estimate those critical, uh, those critical um, uh, orbital uh, data, orbital variables. So, uh, common recognize the di the distinction, uh, the uh, the distinct the the distinction, but common didn't have the engineer engineering terminology to describe it, because uh, uh, he he used the uh, uh, noise in two different ways. He he called the sensor sensor uh, uh, uncertainty sensor measurement and uh, 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 uncertainty associated with the measurement, he called that noise. But he, he gave the, uh, the, the uncertainty in the satellite movement dynamics, he gave that a, a name, he called it process noise, process noise. Okay. And, and if you look carefully, process noise, uh, uh, alias, uh, I give you credit for 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 for, for uh, bringing it up. Uh, it's internal. It's internal to the dynamics of the satellite. It's inherent that you have uncertainties in there. Your rocket, uh, you know, before you enter the orbit, the resistance in the in the uh, atmosphere. Right. So so he didn't have the language of disturbance, he had the language of process noise, and that confused almost everyone. <laughs> that, that, so, so the noise uh, of question was never, was never, uh, 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 was never uh, uh, clearly uh, defined to my knowledge, uh, the, the distinction, distinction between uh, disturbance and noise, and, and it was never defined. Uh, and if he was proposing a general theory of uh, controls, he need to define those terms. He didn't. Confusion ensues. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> this is part of the reason that uh, we opened this discussion in the first place because this is uh, very much something, uh, very much a target of our re-examination. So, if you have a control theory. And uh, you have a loose loose a uh, uh, boat at, at your foundation, <laughs> like uh, the concept of noise, concept of disturbance. Then 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 uh, your whole thing is uh, uh, you you have cracks cracks everywhere because of that. Yeah. So that's. Uh, bring us back to the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue is uh, why, why do we have a, such a disconnect between theory and uh, practice? If we have done it right, if the professor have done it right, the, book, uh, the, 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 the people who wrote textbook have done it right, and the student have done it right, we shouldn't have uh, 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 such thing as uh, this uh, divergence between theory and, uh, and uh, practice. So that, that was a question, that was a question that uh, led me to believe my knowledge, my training in engineering, even though I have a PhD in uh, control engineering from one of the, uh, the major schools uh, in the field. My training wasn't enough to, to, uh, to uh, uh, answer that question. So it took me like about 10 years to search for, you know, to search for uh, uh, answers. And uh, the book behind me, the book behind me, uh, testimonies to, to my struggle. Uh, And the problem is so fundamental. It came down to me, it came down to theory of knowledge. Or uh, uh, there's a term in philosophy. How do we know? 
how do we judge? Earlier today, I, in my undergraduate class, I, I, I uh, uh, have a student uh, read his paper. Uh, and his paper is about the Shannon, Shannon uh, information theory. Uh, and, uh, and his take on Shannon's contribution. Shannon's uh, information theory uh, was so great that we named Shannon. But Shannon was not the author of everything in that theory. Shannon combined a lot of people's work together into a tree of knowledge. And in the process, he has to do a lot of pruning. He has to get rid of a lot of, a lot of stuff in order to keep what's, uh, what's important and keep it uh, cohesive, keep it intact. Right? And, uh, and that ability to, uh, to recognize what is in, what should be out, and that's something that we are unable to do in the, our area uh, of research, our, our area of uh, concentration controls. Right? And that has something to do with how we were taught, how we learn, how we were taught. Right? And uh, uh, giving, to, uh, giving a lot of thought to this problem or to, to even recognize this problem in the first place is Kyle Lynch. Right? <laughs> so I turn this to, <laughs> Uh, to, to to Kyle, and uh, so you you are the guest of honor today. But uh, uh, you can probably uh, uh, see why when cybernetics was coined, it it was part of social science. It was part of uh, 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 governing uh, the the uh, political science. And the same word, you know, maybe a, a, a few decades, a hundred years later, was adopted for 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 our field. It's a governing this this. Uh, it all uh, take it's it all, uh, they all took it from uh, the Greek word, uh, governor. Yeah. So, whether or not. Uh, whether or not we want it, the world is connected. <laughs> There's a connection there. And, and uh, uh, we, may not, we, we, may, we may not want to touch it, but it's uh, there anyway. It, it's there it's staring at us. So I, 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 I uh, get older. I, I think it's uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, skill set are fading, but one area that uh, that I I, uh, I have a particular interest that, that, that grew ever stronger is to make connections, to make connections uh, among seemingly unconnected pieces in our life, in our society, and control engineering. This this uh, engineering cybernetics, the foundation, the the, the, the essence is that. About relationships, you can read a uh, uh, chance uh, book again. Read that uh, uh, that uh, preface. In the preface, he said, "Cybernetics, you know, in general, is about relationships. How 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 these things are all connected, okay? And uh, you look at the uh, uh, steam, steam engine. The steam engine is different from all the other uh, engineering invention in modern time." Because they made the actual relationship, they they they, they put the relationship uh, between two quantities that were otherwise unconnected, and that changed everything. But that gave us such a difficulty in terms of understanding it, in terms of theorizing it. Maxwell failed. A lot of people failed. I think today we begin to see uh, the, the 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 reason they failed, the source of failure. And that gave us hope for the future. Right? Uh, like, uh, Kim tried to articulate what that future would be, but it was so, so um, 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 uncertain, right? So, so, so we have to get our past right in order to have the future. We can have some confidence in it, right? So the secret was in the past. The secret was in the past failure. 
the fa the failure for us to get it right put us to a, to a dilemma today and uh, ruin our future. That's how I, that's how I see it. That's that's why uh, I think to, to get it right for this field to get it right, it started with scrutiny. It started with reflection, re-examination, re, re, re and ultimately renewal. This field needs to be renewed. That's just my opinion. <laughs> So all of you made uh, a, a, a contributions uh, to to this discussion. Uh, a few students uh, didn't quite get the nature of uh, this uh, writing assignment. The nature of writing in your writing, there must be a tension, because when you're scrutinizing something, you are you are putting doubt under something that uh, almost universally accepted. So there's a tension. You know, this is what they uh, believe. This is what the, they tell us. This is what I believe. And uh, uh, so, 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 so the, the people, uh, the writing that I went through, yes, uh, last class and today, uh, uh, fit that uh, fit that uh, 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 scenario. There are a few other writings uh, that uh, didn't quite get there. Didn't quite. Uh, Raised to the level of uh, scrutinizing anything. It's just uh, stating, even in, even if it is in a, a question and the answer dialogue. What is, uh, for example, what is a feedback control? Uh, feedback control is A B C D, and those those were copied from uh, either textbook or internet. And you do a few more of this, okay? It's had no tension. And therefore, no taste. Why should I read your uh, uh, repetition, not the original textbook, if there's nothing new in here? So when you write, you have to write something new, something, <laughs> right? Something uh, 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 come out of your thought process. Okay? And uh, Kyle's uh, essay. And uh, those three uh, references, I think, will go a long way to explain why people feel so inclined, uncomfortable, comfortable just repeating what they've been told. That's what that's what the automaton is, right? <laughs> to repeat what has been said to the next person, to the next generation, so they can repeat. And after a while, <laughs> we lost entirely our ability to question to uh, our ability to critical thinking. This is what that comedian was getting at, right? Our ability to, uh, uh, to think critically was entirely lost in the current situation, in, in uh, yeah. the current education uh, uh, system. So, so anyway, that's my, uh, my little summary. We'll move on to a, uh, to a next uh, topic. But before that, uh, I open the floor, uh, jump in. Uh, if you have any thought on it. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was gonna I was gonna ask uh, Dr. Gao, see where you draw where you draw that line then just like you know when we're talking about noise and disturbance, where do you draw the line and you stop the question, you stop questioning and you say this is um, what I have to deal with. Or you continue on going. Is there like a, a limit to that? That's when you feel like information is obsolete. You 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 are talking about specifically how I distinguish disturbance from noise or, or something. No, no, I'm I'm speaking in general because let me um, I give you an example why I'm asking the question. Because as you as we grow, and I agree by the way with what's being what's being said about us being programmed to some extent, and I. I actually was going to add to that the point of testing. I don't know who came up with testing as part of learning. And I think that's the only method that they found that they can find whether the student learned something or not. But I think testing is a negative aspect of our teaching uh, and education system. So that's, I think, has something to do with what, um, you know, what you were talking about. But 
So when do we, like we got to a point where we grew up and we became less naive to the you know, facts of life. So we stopped questioning certain things. And then that's, that's just an example that, just to give you an idea where I'm asking, like in, in this world of control systems, where do you stop that naivety and you become more mature to understand that this is really the system. This is what I have to deal with. So where do you draw yeah. that line? Was there somebody else uh, speaking? Uh, uh, Does that make sense? I, no, I understand. No, I understand. So what Ibrahim was asking is, you cannot ask uh, asking this question forever. You cannot doubt everything forever. If you doubt everything, you, you believe in nothing, then what do you go on with, right? That, that was a question. You can go to the other extreme and become skeptics. Skeptic doesn't believe anything. And, and, and you, this, this debate that uh, you bring up happened 2,000 years ago in Greece. Right? There was one side, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and there was another side, sophists, skeptics. The people uh, who believe that the, this world is not knowable. I can show you in a book behind me what they say. So this is what I'm talking about. This, was, this is the problem of humanity from the beginning. From the beginning, right? So uh, to, to uh, the, the long version uh, uh, of answer to your question, the short version, none of the perfect. But, but to me, I think for us, for engineering, for engineers, there's a simpler, simpler answer. We put every, every, every uh, uh, theory under the, uh, 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 the test of practicality. It is useful. Does it give us better solutions? Does that lead to a deeper understanding? Okay. These are the tests not for students. These are the tests for theory. Every theory must undergo this uh, test. Much of control theory do not pass this test. They're, they're valid mathematical tools. Don't get me wrong. Linear uh, a vector space, uh, uh, the, the uh, matrix algebra that, that being applied to uh, solve uh, uh, to uh, solve a differential equation to create a uh, geometric uh, 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 shape, understanding how how robots uh, uh, or, or uh, drones behave in uh, a three a three dimensional space. Those those were mathematical tools uh, that we employ. But let's not mistake that for control theory. We have tools, and we bring those tools to solve the problem in control theory. But those tools do not overwhelm us. Those two do not become control theory or do not uh, become uh, a, 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 a synonym of control theory. The con control theory has a unique set of uh, a problem, unique set of constraints, unique set of, of objectives. And these were lost early on in the development of uh, modern control theory. Yeah, they treat it as applied science. It, it's, it's black and white in the books. They treat it as applied science. Uh, they treat ap applied mathematics. Okay? And when you treat it as applied mathematics, you are in the mentality, let's do mathematics first and then apply. And let's see where this can be applied. So, so they come to the field of control. They say calculus of variations can be applied to controls because you guys are all doing a trial error, a single plan. We make it uh, systematic. We make it uh, uh, scientific. We make it mathematical. So that, that's their setting. They, they draw the check. They, you do this, your field will be, uh, will be 10 times better. Yeah. Your, your practice will be 10 times better. So they made that promise in 1957 to 1960. And they it drove all the engineers out, out of the field of automatic control. All the journals were no longer accepting engineering uh, uh, papers. That journal, uh, look at, take a look at the IEEE transaction on automatic control. Give me one paper that you, you can understand. Give me one, show me one. Okay, so, so 
they drove engineer out of the field, incoming the, uh, the, the mathematicians or the PhD student who, uh, who, uh, uh, from, who are from mathematics or like I was, I was a, a PhD student in the uh, E department. But in order for me to do my research in controls, I had to go to the math department, take several courses, including their PhD level mathematics, real analysis and so on. And so this, this field changed completely in the 50s, early 60s. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about. We're not saying we question everything. Just questioning that part was not allowed. <laughs> you're, committing, you're committing suicide if you do that, like Ross, like uh, Daniel found. He just blasted it. And uh, two years later, he's gone. <laughs> There's no place for him uh, in academia. That's what I'm talking about. We're, not, we're nowhere near to the extreme, say we question everything. It's, we're lucky if we're allowed to question the fundamental belief in control system. And you, you go to IEEE, you uh, listen to uh, Carl Ostrom, the guy uh, who wrote a question. You listen to his uh, 2012 American Control Conference plenary, speak, uh, plenary uh, talk. It was the uh, 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 archive on the IEEE uh, server. And it's, uh, the, the, the conference was held at uh, Montreal. It's uh, very rare, the, the, this uh, outside, outside the country, but that year it was in Montreal. And in that plenary talk, he said the following. He said, I'm very disappointed. This is something he wouldn't say in his papers, but in, in, the, in, the, in the talk, is that he's more honest, more, more, more frank. He said, I'm disappointed in the W control. He, he was the guy. He, was the, he dominated the field for over 40 years, right? from 70s to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, 2012. Not, not the five, five, five decades. I'm disappointed. Why? Why was he disappointed? He, he said, I, I was dis I, I'm disappointed in the W control because it doesn't scale. You know that what that word means? It doesn't scale. It doesn't scale for, for anything that uh, uh, to be a, 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 a general purpose solution for industrial application, you, it must be scalable. You must, uh, uh, from one application to another application similar in nature, you must just take the same controller and scale it. Not, not to have a PhD student <laughs> redo the design every single time. And that's what uh, Ostrom was talking about. Although it was coded, and a, a lay person wouldn't be able to, uh, to, uh, to understand what he was talking about. I, I do. I know exactly what he talks about. He talked about the failure of con adaptive control theory as a general purpose solution for industrial control. Guess what? Roars questioned that <laughs> for uh, 30, uh, 30 years earlier. 30 years earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so maybe uh, uh, after the, I, I think this is maybe a point because we talk about Roars so much. I want to show you what George uh, said in his book, the preface of, of his book. I'm gonna show you that. I want to show you 1985, George wrote a paper and what, what Ostrom said at the uh, uh, end of paper. I think this is important. It goes back to uh, Ibrahim's question. Where does it begin? And is there an end to this? Are we going to question it uh, forever? Which is a great question. At what point can we say that we have interrogated this data or this theory enough that we're going to choose to depend on it without necessarily questioning it every time from now on? Another scholar, uh, one of the premier thinker in American academia, He's, uh, uh, he, he became famous because of one paper he published in 1931 or something. Okay? And he answered that very question. He answered that exact same question. It's on everybody's mind, but uh, unfortunately not every field has a giant thinker 
who can shed light to his fellow human beings. But it just happened in the field of uh, economics. You, know, you heard about Adam Smith, you heard about the Keynesian approach, you heard all this uh, uh, famous name. That in economics, as opposed to control, economic theory, and for you to have legs on it, it must be used by somebody. Otherwise, right, you just talk uh, 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 abstract language and nobody cares, you will be in, uh, you, you'll be out of it. Right? So, so you know, in academics, you heard about uh, Adam Smith, the wealth of nation, right? People put that to place and make, make the modern uh, 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 economic systems. And then we question it, we have globalization, we have all this new theory, uh, neoliberal and so on. But these are theories that were put in practice and has real consequences. And so, so you see, it, it still attracts some really first-rate scholars. Unfortunately, in our field, we are lacking first-rate scholars to lead us to go to the right places. And as a result, going back to your question, if we were, uh, if we were misdirected, we wasted a lot, a lot of, uh, quite a few decades and we, we misled a few generations of students and scholars. And that's the reason behind the dominance of PID for over a hundred years. We had nothing else uh, to replace it. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna promote, uh, you know, going back to standardization I was going to say that, that actually the answer to that is standardization. But before I go there, I was going to say there are three missing, in my opinion, I think there, there are things that led to or kept this uh, field a little boxed. One is urgency, two, scalability, which you mentioned it. So urgency and scalability, which both of them lead to standardization. And I think that's when... And I'm, I don't know, that's what at least I'm thinking. I don't know if you agree with me, Dr. Gao, but I think urgency leads, leads to uh, or led in, in fields such as communication or other fields or chemical engineering, for example, led to standardize everything so that we can, you know, have people going back and, and not reuse or not, you know, reinvent the wheel. So I think that's missing from control systems. Urgency, scalability, which will lead to standardization. I think that was, would probably answer the question somehow. Don't, don't worry about whether or not I agree with that. You believe strongly in that position? I do, yes. Stick with it and argue for it. That's what I like to see everyone doing. No, I, I meant what I meant by agreeing, not not to uh, give that comfort feel like it's right or wrong, but from you know because you have that experience in the field. If that triggers or rings a bell, you know the fact that it, was it said before. What I mean is there urgency? I mean, if like for example, if I don't have automation, I'll fall back and default to manual. I don't need control, so that takes the urgency factor out of control as opposed to, you know, something that would, a system that's really urgently needed for our daily lives, for example, you know? That's... We all have our perspectives. Uh, you want to come in through uh, uh, a standardization or lack of, uh, I think that's a good angle and you can stick with it. Or if you want to change it to urgency, so be it, right? But I, I have a, a slightly different angle uh, from my experiences, I would uh, term this, using the right word is so important. I would uh, use uh, uh, the word to describe my take on this is irrelevancy. Uh, if you have a field called control theory that has been around for 70 years and it's still irrelevant to to large extent to what people are doing in the field, the people are doing in the field they make ultimate determination whether or not 
what you are doing is uh, valuable. Just like in, in economics, does your economic theory influence anybody in the world or predict anything? Yeah. If it doesn't, you're irrelevant. Who cares? Right. So, so that's my angle to it. You know, if we if we keep teaching this uh, thing, a uh, uh, code control theory that have been proven irrelevant for, for over fifty years, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> and uh, uh, what the uh, what uh, uh, what add to my understanding of this uh, from Kyle Lynch today is uh, even that question wh whether the uh, 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 theory practice uh, uh, divergence there's the underlying uh, uh, reason in terms of education and that's element i i didn't uh, um, consider before so that's something new to me right but uh i like it that that the uh, you you stick your uh, neck out and, uh, and and stick a position this is what i believe <laughs> the problem, right? And, and, and these are my supporting element, uh, uh, evidence. I think if we all do that to some extent, whether or not we are uh, making a difference uh, in the future, in the field that is relevant, it's, uh, it's, uh, this is uh, your growing, growing uh, uh, process. You, you expand yourself. You experience something you otherwise uh, haven't uh, experienced before. That is, question the authority but question it in the right way you have to come in with a, 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 a legitimate uh, authentic question and that's some of the uh, uh, writings uh, uh, fail to, to to establish you know, what your question has to be legitimate question there has to be uh, some legs underneath it otherwise you you you, you don't question for the sake of question the curiosity, the ambiguity, the uh, the discomfort has to come out of your own. And, and in this regard, I was greatly influenced by American philosophers, Charles Peirce, uh, 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 William James, and uh, John Dewey. And uh, they are known as the father of American pragmatism in philosophy. And uh, they 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 stake out a position which. Uh, other, philosoph uh, other philosophers, continental philosophers, uh, philosophers from the British, uh, from, from England, uh, are really not taking them seriously. But, but uh, uh, I reason it with their position. Their position uh, 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 says there's the cash value to any theory. What is the cash value? The cash value is what can this theory do for us? Does it make a difference whether a theory exists or not? If it doesn't make a difference, <laughs> out. Okay, but there are plenty of people in the world who, who uh, make a smart uh, argument, uh, 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 speculations, uh, imaginations, and they make a nice theory. They write nice books. Okay? So American, uh, you know, being the uh, 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 new world, being uh, uh, you know uh, facing a survival question every day, Americans uh, have this uh, pragmatic attitude to life, and that reflects in American philosophy, and that's called pragmatism, and that's what I can uh, uh, relate to. So that's also helped me quite a bit. In fact, uh, about 15 years ago. I have this question and I said, what's going on with uh, my field? I don't understand. You have this theory and, and you have this practice that, that, that diverging and I don't understand it. So, 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 I, so I called the philosophy, CSU had the philosophy department. I, at that time, I called the chair. I called I said, uh, I need some help. <laughs> I need some help. And uh, uh, who in your department can help me with this question? Okay. And they, uh, uh, the department the chair, uh, connected me to uh, Nicholas Motafakis, Professor Nicholas Motafakis, and uh, he he became my lifelong friend. And, and it was in his class I learned what the, what it means by philosophy, uh, philosophy, uh, philosophy, philosophizing, philosophizing. And in his class, 
he he, uh, he when he teaches uh, uh, Socrates, he was Socrates. You know, he would uh, engage students in this conversation. What is justice? What is courage? What is uh, uh, the the, the uh, um, yeah, justice? Uh, so, so he questioned all these uh, famous uh, people or uh, you know, powerful people on the streets of Athens. And he had the famous six questions <laughs> and uh, nobody could answer him. And he made them lo uh, uh, lose face and he was, put to, he was put to death. Okay, so, so uh, uh, but he, uh, uh, his, uh, his uh, ideas lives on through his students. So, so Plato, so, um, so I, 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 I was taught all, okay? so, so I, I spent like uh, 15 years, 10, 15 years to get behind all, all that. Because to me, it's, it's, it's a different uh, field of study. I have no experience, no, no, no training. At. But it was in his classroom, I learned the most. Because that's, that's how you, how you uh, 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 question how you scrutinize you, you don't question for the sake of question but the, what the, what made the uh, uh, socrates uh, uh, famous was he said i i, I don't know uh, any any more than anybody else but what what the uh, uh, i can do is help you to determine whether or not you really know that to some extent is what we are trying to do here do we really know? If we really know, we shouldn't have this uh, dichotomy between knowing and doing. So, so I hope uh, uh, through this process we will cover what we call what we put under the uh, name of humanity. We we engineers are just like anybody else. We're human beings. We have curiosities, and we also have a critical mind. We do not get brainwashed. We do not like to be <laughs> brainwashed or indoctrinated, as uh, uh, Kyle's <laughs> paper uh, uh, said. We, we, we accept everything only after our internal scrutiny. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's, that, that's the lesson here. So, so you can... You can take your position on any subject, but keep this in mind. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of pruning, prune all our knowledge, get rid of that uh, things that are unreliable, superficial, or downright untrue, and keep those that uh, are legitimate, solid, and reliable. And that that's a process. I think uh, now you are in the graduate school, uh, uh, that's a process called uh, subtraction. Uh, you've been, you've been uh, uh, doing the addition all your life, right? Um, but uh, doing, uh, start doing subtraction is a sign of uh, maturity. We have a few uh, Indian students here, uh, but uh, none of them turn on camera. But uh, uh, you, you can, you can, uh, you, you can tell, tell me who that is. An Indian philosopher, you know, I, I read somewhere, uh, 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 somewhere, this was like uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, when I started. Uh, an Indian uh, 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 mystic or Indian philosopher said that uh, you do not philosophize until you pass the age of 55. It, that's when you start to do some serious subtraction. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah, I heard about that, sir, actually. <laughs> really? Can, can, you, can, can, can you help me find out who said that? And when? Yeah, yes. Sure, sure, sure. Just a second. Yeah. That would be very, that would be, that'd be very helpful. I, I like that. Okay, that. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. When I was young, I don't have this kind of thoughts. <laughs> I just want to get hit, get hit in life. <laughs> I have a family to raise. I have a, a, a mouth to feed. I, mean, I, I don't have time to philosophize.
So, so, so be, be very careful with the young gurus. <laughs> there are plenty of them. You, you, still, you, you, see, you see them on YouTube all the time. You know, there, was, there was a guy who was 25, was doing business, and all of a sudden he said, oh, I'm not going to do business. I'm, I have an enlightenment. I'm going to, uh, to, to be a sage. And uh, sure enough, you know, he, he attracted uh, several million people, and he had a website selling merchandise. He was doing much better than he was uh, than his old business. <laughs> so be very careful with that. I, uh, I've seen so many. Yeah, so, so, so Jigdash, please, uh, if you can find that, uh, uh, let me know. That, that's a very good, uh, that's very good take on, on that. Yeah, 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 sure. So just is, I'm, I'm trying to find it. Yeah. So, so I think only after you accumulate all this experience, I think that's why you see Eric and uh, Kyle, and, and uh, to some extent, uh, Michael also, uh, bring, bring some uh, uh, thoughtfulness to, to, to this class and also uh, Daniel with the experiences uh, that they gained in the uh, engineering uh, field. And now they, uh, they, they, they look back, they reflect on that. Right? And uh, you know, they, they start talking about 21st uh, century mammals. <laughs> Threw me off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you know what? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, so late. I I didn't give you a break, and I I, I was going to give you a break until uh, Abraham jumps in. So blame him, <laughs> blame him. <laughs> and, and it's five forty, and uh, so I I think that's enough for today, <laughs> right? Uh, it's uh, uh, I'll let you go and um, uh, enjoy your weekend. Yeah, and think about all this, right? Uh, internalize it. I cannot put an assignment for this, but I think this is more, more, more than anything else than your uh, 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 to uh, require your attention, your deliberation, your thoughtfulness. Okay? And uh, when you come out of this process the, uh, uh, to the other end, you'll be a different person. I did. I I I become a different person. My my colleague uh, 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 said, "What happened to you? <laughs> you went to depart. You 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 went to talk to some uh, philosopher on campus, and you came back a different person." <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I have no I have no regret. I I I I didn't uh, write as many papers I should have, but but so what? <laughs> they don't need the. Uh, uh, a few more papers from me anyway, right? But, but I hope I, I convey to you something that I uh, haven't conveyed before. You know, I hope there's something new, new, new in this. And uh, I hope I can do this for a few more years. <laughs> okay. Sounds like nobody wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> After all, I think I did everybody a favor, right? <laughs> yeah, you did. I, I was going to move on to uh, to Roars and show you all this, uh, you know, the all, all this uh, 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 material about him. The, the, that, the, you know, the, the, it's astonishing what uh, what he. Uh, what, uh, uh, since you have, uh, you know, let me tell you one one story about Roars. He was so smart. He was a genius. And uh, when he was undergraduate uh, student at, at Notre Dame, he, he was undergraduate student, then he moved on to uh, MIT, get a master's and PhD, and come back to teach uh, 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 at the, uh, the same school for a few more years, for a few years, and then and he left. So when I was there, uh, we still hear stories about him. And this is the uh, uh, middle of 1980s, right? And he graduated uh, in, 80, in 78, something like that. So the stories were still circling around. And one story was that he was, uh, uh, he was an engineering student and he had some roommates uh, studying biology or something. Uh, and th they made a bet. They made a bet. So, uh, and, uh, get everyone was talking about the organic biology was so, was so difficult, right? It was a, a, a game stopper for a lot of people who want to get, in to, get into medicine. So he made a bet with uh, with his roommates or buddies. He said, uh, "I'm going to go to your uh, uh, final exams, I'm not, and, and I'm going to get, to, to get an A." 
without taking the course. <laughs> and he did. That's what the legend. He did. He, he was one of the smartest person I ever know. And he, he, he speaks with a heavy accent, New, New York accent. And uh, the first lesson I get, uh, I, I, I remember I, I said in, in his class, I, I was fr fresh uh, up the boat <laughs> from Beijing. Right? I was a first year graduate student. I, I, I hardly uh, understand anything he said. Right? And uh, with a heavy New York accent, uh, he, his wife uh, uh, is a lawyer. <laughs> Very smart, you know. We, he invited us uh, 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 to, to to his house, and he had a boat. Put us on the boat, and uh, uh, we, we we took a, a adaptive control adaptive control from him. And at that time, he 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 was he was much more busier than before as a businessman. He was the director of the uh, Tao Lab as, uh, uh, locally you know, in, uh, in, uh, in 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 South Bend. So he, so he, he, he uh, quite a few times he couldn't come to come to class, and uh, there was one one semester he gave everybody A, <laughs> gave everybody A's. <laughs> he couldn't give us a final exam, so he he had us uh, make presentation and tape it. Right? But in in that same uh, in that same same semester, uh, there was a, a uh, 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 one class he couldn't make it. And uh, the next time he came, he was he feels so guilty, so guilty about this. And um, he gave everybody beer. <laughs> he gave a beer to, to everyone. <laughs> we were drinking beer while he was lecturing. <laughs> That's Charles Gross, a character, a character. But he was also very serious. You know, he uh, uh, he called people cheating in his class, undergraduate class, and he failed a bunch of them. This is before I came, this is before I, uh, I I met him, and this may be the last year or you know, in his uh, uh, full time as an assistant professor. He failed, but and, and you know at that time Notre Dame, uh, this was thirty years ago, thirty five years ago, uh, the income, uh, 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 average income of the students' uh, uh, households is ninety thousand dollars, ninety thousand dollars, eighty five. Right, these are rich kids. <laughs> And still uh, today uh, it's very uh, uh, selective, but he failed them, and the, the, the parents come complaining, and and everything he she she failed them. You know, he 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 he, he didn't uh, 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 hesitate at all. I I don't know if that uh, if that uh, 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 have any uh, uh, thing to do with his uh, leaving, uh, but, but he he didn't make any friend at the school. He didn't make any friend. In his uh, field, <laughs> he made a lot of enemies. He didn't care. Yeah. So, so last time I checked, I, I uh, he he's on LinkedIn. You can check. Uh, you, you can check out. Uh, he's on LinkedIn. He's a uh, he's a consultant. He's a consultant. He's back to uh, to Boston. He's uh, I think his he, his wife is probably uh, still practicing law there, and uh, um, he 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 went back to MIT a long time ago. Uh, not as a professor, but as uh, maybe uh, a, a research uh, professor or, uh, in some capacity. And, and uh, uh, now I think he's, uh, he's just uh, consulting on the side. By, by this time, he's probably uh, 70s, right? So, 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 uh, so that's Charles Schwartz. I, I, I still hear his name in conferences, in, uh, in IEEE conferences. People were still talking about his uh, counter examples, even today. You know, he 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 spent very short uh, short few years uh, in the field, and uh, he he made everybody scrambling, <laughs> and they were not happy. <laughs> they were not happy. Anyway, uh, let, let me stop here.